Hello again. I keep wanting to make a video because, as I'm famous for now, my videos are very sporadic and there is no routine to them. There is no consistency. They're a bit, you know, here and there. Um, and so I've been wanting to make a video for quite a while since uploading my last one, really. I think with my last one, I've planned to do them very regularly, not necessarily daily, but I remember thinking the best way to stay on board with my low spend is to record it basically you know have a, a daily sort of vlog of it and then nothing came of it anyway point is i keep wanting to make videos and i keep finding myself not really having the time and so i decided i will do another one of these um make a video whilst i'm doing something else type uh, recordings <laughs> so i'm just about to put some makeup on and i thought well <laughs> I could perhaps make a video at the same time. Um, so I wanted to talk a bit about the no spend because it's my focus at the moment. A couple of reasons. Everything seems to um, relate to each other. Um, oh dear, I'm not very good with words, am I? What I mean is at the moment, um, the no spend has been a little bit out of control recently. Um, basically, I've just got back from holiday. We went to Florence in Italy, beautiful, beautiful place. And I had no intentions to buy anything because I was doing so well on the getting rid of stuff, um, not buying stuff. And um, it all went hand in hand, really. Your zero waste, your minimalism, your low spend. They're three things that go together. You do one of them and often the other two kind of come as part and parcel of it. Because when you're trying to be zero waste, one of the best ways to do that is to stop buying stuff um, because it's all the packaging, you know, and is to find alternative ways. Um, of course, if you're not buying stuff, that's gonna make you more minimalist and it's also going to cause, what I'm thinking, less, of course you to spend less money, sorry. I'm just gonna blame this on the menopause, my brain. <laughs> anyway. So I went to Italy, I had been doing really well before we went, I had no intentions to buy anything, um, wasn't interested at all for the first couple of days. And then we'd gone with a friend and I'm not blaming her at all, but she's a bit like me, as in she loves a bit of a um, second hand uh, spend. You know, we love a bit of a thrifty spend. And uh, the last thing you expect to find in Italy is what we call charity shops here in the UK, um, any form of second hand shop. And my friend did say that to me. She says, oh, you know, it's a shame there's no charity shops here. And I thought, well, you, yeah, but you're not going to find them in Florence, are you? Um, anyway, she went online. Is my phone slipping down? I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm slowly disappearing out of view. I've got my scar on the wall now. <laughs> Is that any better? Anyway, yes, yeah, she went online and she said to me, I found two secondhand shops. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they're like a 20 minute walk or whatever. So I said, oh, great, we'll go. And the first one, which I think was a charity shop, wasn't that great, um, only took cash. Um, I had 15 euros in my purse and I did see a pair of trousers I liked for 15 euros, but I thought I won't buy them now um, because we're going to the second charity shop that might also be cash only. I might see something I prefer. So I did a very good job of um, not buying something, you know, seeing it, wanting it, liking it, but choosing not to buy it. Went on to the second charity shop. Don't know whether it was charity, but it was definitely like eco-friendly. It was all about, um, it was it was amazing actually. It was a really big shop. And they had this area in there where there was a lady with a sewing machine and there were all these clothes that she seemed to have done something to them. She'd either repaired them or made them funky. You know, she'd put a bit of embroidery on or a patch or something. Really amazing way because I think a lot of charity shops, I used to volunteer in one in the UK and you get clothes in and if they had a hole or a rip or a seam coming undone, they went, they, they couldn't be sold. And what we used to do was they went into a bag of rags and somebody would buy them, I don't know why, according to weight. So we'd get a little bit of money for them and they just went off as rags. But this shop, you know, it was amazing because somebody was there sewing up seams, sewing up hems, adjusting things because, and it's all about the eco-friendly um, stance, I guess. And that's why they were doing it. I think they were trying to show you that you don't necessarily need new clothes. You can make your clothes look different. And, and the friend I went with is like that. She had this cardigan. I said, I really love your cardi. What I realised at the end of the day was there was nothing special about this cardigan. It was a plain white, boring cardigan, but she'd taken the white buttons off and sewn on multicoloured buttons. And that's what had caught my eye. That's what I loved about it. So anyway, point being, in this second hand shop, I must have bought myself five, seven new items that I didn't need. 
and I've come home from holiday and I've actually got things I'm thinking, I don't know whether I'm ever going to wear this. You look at things differently on holiday. I certainly do. When I'm on holiday, I wear things that are much brighter. I love bright colours, as you know. But uh, when I'm on holiday, I'll wear things for some reason in the hot climate. Um, I'll wear different things that I, than I would wear at home. So I come home and I think, I don't know whether I'm ever going to wear this at home. And I'm instantly regretting having bought them and feeling that they were a waste of money. I could sell them on Vinted, but I wouldn't get what, back what I paid for them, which I don't mind if it's something that I've been wearing for a year, decided I no longer want it, and then sell it on Vinted. But this is something I've brought home, not yet worn it at all, not worn it once. And I'm thinking, I don't know whether I want to keep this. I'm also going in my wardrobe and I kind of have this little rule with myself that if I've run out of hangers, then I've got too many clothes. I'm not going to go out and get new hangers. I don't hang two things per one hanger. Um, I say that. I might hang trousers and top on a hanger, but I wouldn't put two tops on one hanger. Um, and so I've run out of hangers and I'm thinking, I've, I've got too many clothes. And I'm really annoyed with myself because I felt I was doing really well. So I've had a, I've, I've had a bit of a back slip and there's no point in getting upset about it. I'm certainly not going to cry about it. I'm going to learn from it. And so that's kind of why I'm here to make this video. To let you know that we all slip up. But because I have slipped up, I now want to um, get back on track. And I think the best way to get back on track is to start making videos. So the reason for this video, because I'm in my bathroom, is because I wanted to share with you. Um, I made a video last time. Was it? Oh, I, I made a video previously in my bathroom and I was talking about the stock I've got. The st I say stock, the stuff I've got. I don't buy stuff to stock up, but I did have excess stuff. For example, um, I use a wild deodorant and I think when I bought the refills, they were three for two. So I had three of them, one on the go, two spare. And I had sort of contemplated, what will I do when they've run out? Um, if you watch the video, you'll probably know that I had plans to use this. This is just a salt stick. You might be familiar with them. And I bought this way back at the beginning of my zero waste journey. So we're talking about eight years ago, maybe more. Now it's not going to go off. It's just salt. So, you know, salt is a preservative. It will keep, but I haven't used it. I have used it, but what I mean is I've still got it going. There's still, you know, it's not like it's hardly worn out. Anyway, today I realised I'm down to the bottom of my last uh, wild deodorant. So you've got that little bit in the bottom. For any of you who use it, you'll know that you've got this little bit here that I need to use. It doesn't work with the um, dispenser, if that's what you want to call it. But I, I'm not going to waste it. So I use that little bit. And then what am I going to do? Am I going to go out and buy more? Or am I going to go on to the salt stick? I do plan on giving it a go. I have given it a go in the past. And basically the reason I gave up on it, I guess, is because when you apply any sort of deodorant, whether it's a spray on, a roll on or a stick, you're applying something to your skin and you can feel that. And um, when you use this, you can't. So it's a funny little thing. It's not an um, antiperspirant. It doesn't stop you, you sweating, but it's meant to, I think it's designed to absorb the odour so you don't smell. And basically when you put it on your skin like this, it drags. You can see because it's um, a dry salt, so it kind of drags. So what you're supposed to do is wet it or put it on straight after the shower. And then when you've done that, just put a little drop of water on it, it run, runs smoothly. If you just do that, You've added water to your arms. That's no good. So you need to keep going like this until the water has gone, soaked in and it starts to drag again, which means it's obviously it's dry. Then you have the full effect Then it's working. Then you've added some of this salt, I presume, to your skin. Now, you've seen how long that took. And so I think it's laziness on my part. I'm a bit lazy. And if you put a bit too much water on, it takes even longer. Um, I want to just quickly give my armpits a quick whoosh, 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 and off I go. So I'm going to give it another try. I don't think it's that it doesn't work. I think it's quite simply the fact that I'm a bit lazy. Anyway, point being, I've got to the point in my bathroom where I've used something up and I need to now think of an alternative. With everything else that hasn't happened, I've used up um, face creams and I've had another one waiting to be used up. 
um, I've used up toothpaste now I said about my toothpaste I had that on a subscription and I was unable to cancel it so it arrived and then I cancelled it because I went to cancel it and it was already in the post on the way so I've got like probably months of supply of this toothpaste you fill your bottle refill your bottle so I'm going to be okay for toothpaste for a long time um what else again you see when it comes to shampoo and shower gel I have these refills shall I show you them I'm here I'm still here I haven't gone anywhere stay with me bear with me bear with me um these I'm, i probably showed them on the last video but these do seem to last ages so i've still got like loads left here i don't wash my hair very often it's quite um it's sort of dry i don't have greasy hair um and my hair is actually better it probably could be a week without washing it um i tend to wash it twice a week so my shampoo and conditions last for ages and i also fill up my shower gels they're all you know, I've got plenty. I'm not going to run out of those for a long, long time. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> with with regards to the bathroom, it's going to be a long time before I need to buy anything. Um, I just thought I'd update you on the deodorant situation. And if I do buy one, I'll let you know. But I do want to make more videos with regards to my no spend, simply because I've had this blip and um, I need to get back on board not spending. Before I went away on holiday, like I said, I was doing really well, but I was feeding my I don't want to say addiction because addiction is a serious um I don't want to say illness but it's a serious condition but when we joke about it when it comes to shopping but I do have this kind of um desire to be spending money all the time to be buying things I just find that my go-to um uh uh, relaxation activity I guess is shopping I love it and sometimes I just browse and I won't buy anything but I still like shopping and I think a lot of us are like that so recently when I'm wanting to spend money um, or buy things or do some shopping I've been buying stuff for my grandson and this works quite well because I'm not buying stuff for me but one thing that is really worth considering I'm gonna see if I can move actually oh, I haven't put my lipstick on um, I'm just gonna use a lip balm today a lip a lip anyway um, one thing that's worth considering is don't use this as an excuse to go out and spend money because you're filling up someone else's house with crap. My daughter probably doesn't want loads more crap in her house. So when I do buy stuff for my grandson, I tell myself it's going to stay here. I'm not going to give it to her to fill her house. That's better. Um, so it has to stay here. But because he's very young at the moment, um... It's, I can't think and walk at the same time. What is the matter with me? Why can't I think and walk at the same time? Because it's coming, because he's very young at the moment, it does mean that, you know, he outgrows things very quickly. Um, so he needs new things quite recent, quite regularly, you know. Um, I do buy it nearly all second hand because obviously if he's outgrowing clothes within three months, you don't want to spend a lot of money on new ones. Um, I like to have changed of clothes here because he does, when he comes to me, he does always need at least one change of clothes. So I like to have a few things here. I love buying for him and it's like my new obsession in a way. Um, that needs to stop as well now. I think I look through the things I've got and I think to myself, well, he's got plenty of toys and as he grows and I donate those to charity, I will get some more for him. He's got plenty of clothes. Same thing. You know, I don't need to buy anything for him now. So I have to stop this um, habit of going out and wanting to spend money. Um, it got out of control recently. It really did. Um, I wonder if I dare show you this. This is really, really embarrassing. Um, I'm going to flip the camera. This, right. I'm sorry. I'm really embarrassed by it. This is my pile of clothes from holiday. I've come home, I've gone to empty my suitcase and I've thought, I haven't got a hanger for that. That's, you know, I didn't really wear that, so I'll leave it to wear. Won't hang it back in the wardrobe because <laughs> I don't know whether you think like me, but I think, you know, my suitcase, I had some stuff that needed washing and some stuff that didn't, but because they've all been in the case together, I kind of feel as if they're all a bit dirty now. So what I need to do is hang them up. The things that haven't been worn, I would normally hang them on the curtain rail with the window open to get some breeze through them because I don't want to be washing things unnecessarily. So anyway, I kind of looked at it, didn't know what to do with it and chucked it on a pile. And I'm really embarrassed about this pile of clothes. So I need to go through, I need to free up some hangers for stuff that I want to keep. 
um, get rid of the stuff that I don't want to keep and um, get myself back on track. I've probably got more clothes there just from holiday than some people have in their entire wardrobe. And I'm ashamed, really. Um, I shouldn't say I'm ashamed because I don't want to make those of you who want to embark on a minimalism journey or a zero waste journey or a low spend journey. I don't want you to feel bad um, and ashamed if you've got loads of stuff. But I think for the, the kind of attitude I have and the things I advocate on this channel, this is not really acceptable. But you know, there you go. If, you're, if you've got a massive pile of clothes in, in the corner of the bedroom and you're thinking, oh no, I couldn't do that. <laughs> Here you go. You can. I think I might endeavour to do another video tomorrow. Am I busy tomorrow? Oh, well, I am a bit busy, but I'll try and find five minutes um, and show that I've cleared this away. And I might hope to also have a little pile of stuff that I'm getting rid of. Um, and I can show you that and also be able to promise you that I, well, not promise you, but I'd like to be able to say I didn't spend any money today. I know that that's not going to be the case because I do have to take a walk to the supermarket and buy some bread and bits and bobs. But um, I'll let you know exactly what I spent and exactly what I bought. Now, I imagine that to be incredibly boring, but I know people do those kind of videos, so I shall do one too. Anyway, look at the state of it.